Hello viewers, my name is Rongwise Ganji and welcome to Quick and Dirty Roleplaying. In this episode, I'd like to talk about roleplaying in the setting of Elden Ring. The setting of Elden Ring provides a massive landscape for you to explore, with a wide and diverse cast of characters to interact with, rich lore that is hinted at and subject to lots of interpretation, and the opportunity to return to life after physical death. However, the initial premise of the game, which is becoming the Elden Lord, may seem counterproductive to the idea of having your own background and agenda, but it doesn't have to be that way. I would like to address some of the drawbacks of role-playing in the setting of Elden Ring. One of the biggest drawbacks is people will know what happened, what the plot lines of the established NPCs will be, if not from direct experience from playing the game, then from looking it up on the internet. Uh, two ways of dealing with this immediately come to mind. The first and more drastic way of dealing with this issue is to replace one or more of the established NPCs with original NPCs. For the new NPCs, come up with the following. A way they're tied to the setting, like if they're a noble or they're tarnished, a demi-human, etc. A, a basic personality, you, know, you can use like the Myers-Briggs um, personality categories or the big five or whatever else will help you quickly generate one. A highly distinctive uh, quirk or personality flaw because characters in these kinds of games, they almost always have some weird notable personality flaw to them. Another NPC or force that they serve, at least one relationship thread to another NPC, a one sentence goal that they want to accomplish, one or two reasons why they can't accomplish that goal by themselves and thus look to the PCs for assistance, a distinctive look, and two to three reasons the players would want to get involved with this NPC. Their initial reaction with the PCs will determine what they do next. Remember that while Elden Ring only allows for NPCs to fight with you via summon signs and typically only against the boss, in a tabletop RPG, they can literally just accompany you and help you out as long as it serves them to do so. This can completely change the way you look at engaging with the setting of Elden Ring from, from the default largely solo adventure that you, un, that you undertake in the video game. Quote unquote, mis visiting another character's world is largely a conceit used to meddle in the affairs of another NPC or another PC tarnished that doesn't make sense in a tabletop role-playing game. Also keep in mind that the simple fact of introducing a new NPC and or removing an established NPC can have ripple effects on the other NPCs in the setting itself, as certain NPCs within the game have their fates inexorably tied to another NPC plotline. What happens when that relationship no longer exists or a new one is established? Well, that's when you play to find out what happens. The second and less drastic way of dealing with established NPCs is to keep their agenda, but to disregard their plot lines. An established plot line is, in my opinion, anathema to a tabletop RPG. It's necessary for a video game due to the nature of the medium, but it's not something that you have to abide by. Just like with any other art IP that has its own tabletop role-playing game, you don't have to follow its, its, its established plot. It's your version of Elden Ring, not from softwares. The simple act of switching the starting location of an NPC from one place to another is mysterious enough to warrant a different trajectory. Instead of meeting White Mask Vare after coming out of the Finger, Folk's hero, of the Finger Folk Hero's grave, have the PCs meet Hyetta the Blind Maiden, or Nephili Lo, or Blackguard Big Bogart. But please don't subject him to the Dung Eater so early, that would be cruel. Or have the, the PCs start off with a relationship with another established NPC. What if you were allied with D, the Hunter of the Dead, because you're an Order Fundamentalist who wants to rid the lands between of those who live in death because it defies the logic of the Golden Order? What if you were a student of the Raya Lucaria Academy and were seeking out your former instructor, Sorceress Selen, in order to learn what was forbidden from the Academy? Or what if you were a warrior jar and rival to Iron Fist Alexander, 
and you were looking for the strongest warriors in the lands between to quote unquote absorb their strength so that you can emerge the victor. As an aside, keep in mind that Elden Ring deals with a lot of disturbing subject matter, such as body horror. So check with your with uh, what your group is comfortable with and make the appropriate adjustments. Those are just two ways that spring to mind on how to deal with established NPCs in the setting of Elden Ring. Next, I'd like to talk about incorporating the impermanence of PC death in the setting of Elden Ring. Traditionally, in tabletop RPGs, death is the ultimate showstopper. When your character dies, you can no longer play that character unless the rest of the group has access to some form of resurrection. Otherwise, you create a new character to keep playing. In Elden Ring, however, when you die in the game, you simply respawn at the last site of grace you rested at, or at a stake of Merica if there's one close by. Now why is this lore-wise? Why does the main character come back to life about a half a day later when killed? There are lore reasons for the impermanence of death, but I want to focus on why the main character you play keeps coming back and keeps going on after being killed time and time again. The main character and other established NPCs like them are tarnished. Warriors that have been cast out of the lands between a long time ago, but have been beckoned back after the Shattering War. The tarnished are touched by grace, the grace of the Two Fingers. The Two Fingers want the main character to become the Elden Lord and therefore guides them by allowing them to see rays of light that flow from sites of grace to their ultimate objective, the base of the Erd Tree. Along your journey, you meet other Tarnished that tell you that they are no longer guided by grace and thus are no longer on the path to become the Elden Lord. What could have caused this to happen? Was it the machinations of the Two Fingers that caused them to no longer be touched by grace? Or did they simply lose heart, thus losing the blessing of grace, just like how Peter Parker lost his spider powers in Spider-Man 2 due to a lost sense of purpose? What happens to a Tarnished when they die and they are no longer touched by grace? While a Tarnished touched by grace may come back to life when they die in battle or from an environmental hazard, death is still a traumatic experience all the same. In tabletop role-playing terms, Tarnished PCs should have a death threshold that, once surpassed, causes them to no longer be playable for whatever reason makes sense. This threshold can be a limited number of lives, like in the Paranoia RPG, minus the clones, some sort of willpower dice roll or a two fingers reputation roll to maintain the touch of grace every time the Tarnished dies, or a percentile roll set at a base chance, like 90%, but that goes down by 5% chance by 5% for every death suffered. Perhaps the ever-increasing chance of failure can be halted or regressed by making some sort of one-time sacrifice or devil's bargain. Whichever mechanics you choose to employ, while suffering death, a single death is not the end, losing the will to go on can have the same effect as death in more traditional RPGs, which is the loss of player agency. On the other hand, being able to come back to life does allow a player to continue playing that character and to learn something from the experience. The half a day passage of time it takes to revive means that the narrative has moved forward, so circumstances change, unlike in the video game. There's a great amount of consideration to think about when incorporating the setting of Elden Ring into a tabletop role-playing game, and I've only touched upon two points in this video. I would definitely like to go into more aspects of it in future videos. If roleplay in the setting of Elden Ring is of interest to you, and you want to use an RPG system that'll, that will allow you to do so with minimal fuss and with a tremendous amount of, immer of immersion, then consider the quick and dirty RPG system currently available on DriveThruRPG. Link is in the description. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If there are other points you'd like me to explore regarding the subject, please leave a comment and keep it respectful. Take care folks, and play to find out what happens.